If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, Paranormal Believers, What's Your Ghostly, Creepy, Paranormal, or Spooky Encounter Story? I grew up in a mobile home. When I was very little, maybe eight, I made a friend that lived on the floor. His name was Adam, and he was my best friend all that year. He wasn't there every day, and he was only there certain times of the day, usually right as I would get home from school. Adam always asked me how I was and what I did that day. Sometimes he would ask me to go to different places in the house so he could hear me better, it was usually in the bathroom. I would sit in the tub and talk to him. My brother could hear him too, but he lived with my grandparents and wasn't over often. Dad I don't think I heard him, but Adam never talked when he was around. He wanted me to go outside a lot, and sometimes I did, but I never met Adam or saw him. Then one day Adam just stopped talking, and I never heard from him again. I'm not sure if this is a ghost or a spirit of some kind. I almost hope it was. That'd be easier to swallow than the very likely story that there was someone under my goddamn house. This is one my grandma used to tell about one of her aunts. They lived in Laos during the secret war. Her aunt started talking with one of the American soldiers, and he started learning basic Hmong. After some time, though, he stopped showing up. The basic consensus was that he was dead, but she kept waiting for him. When things got really bad and the bombs started dropping, they fled to the caves for shelter. One night, as everyone is sleeping, she hears a familiar voice. It's the soldier. He's mumbling in a very broken Hmong, I'm back for you, over and over again. Her eyes are still closed until she feels something reach out and grab her shoulder and slowly move down to her hand. When it reached her hand, she said it wasn't a human hand at all, but like a large animal paw. She briefly opened her eyes to see a dark figure, clearly not human, standing over her. Then she heard her aunt get up. Something was said, but she couldn't make out what it was. The figure then left, and the ant followed. This was still in the middle of the night, mind you. The ant was never seen again. The story is that the dead soldier came back to take her with him. Or something else imitated him in order to take her. A girl I knew for a few years and was very good friends with passed away in a car accident. A few days later, I have a dream that she's standing in the center of the road, and I'm barreling towards her. I run into her, but then she appears in the seat beside me. She forces my head towards her abdomen. Where her stomach would be, there's a large mouth. The teeth are made of broken glass and sharp metal. She keeps saying, shh, shh. I wake up from the dream, and I'm still hearing, shh. I look at the foot of my bed, and she's standing in my room. She walks through my door and into the hallway. I follow her. She walks down the hallway and vanishes through the front door of the house. I didn't realize it at the time, but my dad was on the couch. He asked me if I was okay and if the flickering lights were what woke me up. He didn't see her, and I never noticed the lights flickering. My parents have both passed away. Their wishes were to be cremated, the ashes put in a nice box, and set on our wine rack. This wine rack has three shelves, and I was instructed to keep one shelf between the boxes. Well, my dad passed away in 2011 and my mother in 2015. It took me a few weeks to find a box for my mom. At that time, I kept her ashes in the same room, but a few feet away from the wine rack. Apparently, Someone wasn't happy about this. Outside, we had a doorbell. Every single night at 3 a.m., it would begin ringing and wake me up. I took the button portion inside so nobody could push it. It would still ring at 3 a.m. I took the batteries out, and they still rang at the same time. I broke the whole thing apart, but it still rang. Our phone began to call itself and display my mom's name on the caller ID. Even though the bill was in my name, my dad's guitars hung on the wall next to this wine rack. The string started breaking, one every few days. All of this stopped as soon as I got my mom a box and put her in the correct spot. None of it has happened since. I have zero intention of moving these boxes, and if I ever move to a new house, they will be transported together, with something acting as a divider between the two of them. This happened about eight or so years ago, around Thanksgiving, at my grandma's house. Everyone was asleep except for me. The only people in the house were my grandparents, my mom, my brother, and me. No one else. I was on the computer because I couldn't sleep. I turned on a small TV to watch Adult Swim while I browsed the internet. At around 4.30, I started getting a chill up my spine, and I heard some children laugh. Distinctly, the voices of a little girl and a boy. I know I'm all by myself as far as being awake, so I turned to look at the TV, and it was in the middle of an Inuyasha fight sequence, so there was no way the laughter was coming from that. I checked the computer sound settings, and I had every possible output muted, so it wasn't that either. 
I sat there confused for a few moments while the giggles of the two children were playing in the background. I figured maybe the radio in the kitchen was on. It was digital, so maybe it just came on for some reason or it had a timer. I got up, and I kid you not, as I was walking to the door, with each step, the laughter grew louder. From giggling to guffaws to hard laughter, once the guffaws started, I started to hear a baby cry as well. What's going through my mind now is, what the duck kind of radio show is this? And I just took three steps. There is nowhere near the door. I took a few more steps, and the laughter turned hysterical, if not maniacal. The baby's cries turned into screams and wails, as if they were in pain. I was trembling and terrified with each step I took to the doorway, but my mind was on autopilot, I needed to get out of there and across the hall to my mom, who surely would help me and notice the weird sounds too. The last couple of steps increased the laughter and crying to an almost deafening decibel. It was like I was at a concert, and the speakers were directly in my ears, blasting noise. It was painful and scared the shit out of me. I took all the courage I had, and as soon as I reached the doorway, I was going to sprint. I started to run, but then something shoved me away. I felt these hands and my chest push me back into the room with enough force to throw me off balance. The crying and laughter stopped as soon as I was back in the room. This all happened within 20 to 30 seconds, but it felt like 10 minutes. I was so scared that I cried and slept in the tiny armchair before my grandma came in the room and made me sleep in her bed downstairs. So I spent six months living in my family's cottage in the far north of Michigan. That place always felt weird, but I chalked it up to my nerves and the odd noises of the woods, as I was born and raised in cities and had never been so isolated before. Then, the night before I moved out of an apartment with a friend, as I was falling asleep, I experienced a powerful hypnagogic jerk, that thing where you feel like you're falling and sit up really hard, and as I did so, I heard a tiny voice in my ear say. Goodbye. I was driving home from work at night, like it was dark, but not too late, probably 830 to 9. I was not drunk or on any drugs, I was not sleepy, it was not storming, etc. It wasn't backwoods or anything. I live in a moderately sized city, but it was a somewhat back road, and I was the only car on that stretch of road. All of a sudden, a little girl ran out into the road from the right, she was wearing one of those mid-century looking dresses that reminded me of pictures of my mom, a frilly knee-length red dress with one of those fake white apron things on it. Pigtails. She looked like she was chasing something. She looked up at me, and before I could even complete my panic response of trying to stop or swerve, she ducking disappeared. I have no explanation for this. I drove that same stretch of road for the next year or so while I lived on that side of town and never saw her again. My good friend shared this story with me, and I've never been able to shake it. He's about 40 and divorced. Back when he was married with a one-year-old daughter, he and his wife bought a house and moved in. It was apparently an old house that needed some fixing up, but they got a good deal and were ready for the work. After a week or so, he notices a life-size doll in the corner of the nursery where his daughter sleeps. It creeps him out because he's a normal human being, so he turns it around to face the corner, so it stops staring at him. After putting the kid to bed, he goes downstairs and asks his wife about it. Where did we get that doll? She looks at him and says, I don't remember, I assume someone gave it to you for our daughter, and we moved it here. He's a little weirded out because he didn't remember moving the doll and wonders if maybe it was in the house when they moved in and he didn't notice it. The next morning, he goes to get the kid out of her crib and notices something. The doll isn't facing the corner anymore. It's looking at him again. I'm getting shivers already just remembering him tell me this. That's enough to creep anyone out, so he throws it in the closet and shuts the door. That night, he had an argument with his wife. I don't remember what it was about, and it's not really relevant. But the point is that they were getting into it a bit, loud and focused enough that they didn't notice their daughter crying upstairs. At a lull in the argument, his wife hears her and says she's going to go check on her, but he just tells her she'll be fine, let's hash this out. Another minute goes by, and suddenly he realizes he's practically having to shout over the noise of his daughter screaming from her room. It sounds different. It's not a normal cry. He glances at his wife and quickly starts up the stairs. What he saw when he opened the door literally makes my eyes water with fear when I think about it. The closet door is open. The life-size doll is sitting next to the crib, motionless. And its arms are reaching through the bars towards his daughter. Just stiff and motionless, like it was caught in the act before returning to a doll state. Needless to say, the doll was thrown out, and I believe it even burned. There's no explanation for that other than something seriously demonic. We have a ton of back roads near our town in Pennsylvania that my friends and I love exploring because they just take you to random old farms or hidden trails in the forest. 
We did this a lot in our pastime together. So my two friends leave my boyfriend's house, I stayed because I was spending the night with him, and they decide to go exploring. They go down a road they've never seen before and are driving on it for about 15 minutes until they come across a house. The house is white and deserted, except for the light of a fridge in the kitchen that they can see through the window. Creepy, but they continue on. They go further down the road and come to the end. A house is in front of them, with a garage on the side. The garage door is open, and no lights are on. It's already creepy enough, and they decide to turn around when they see something. A dog walks out of the garage and just stares at the car. They told me it had a very human-like face. I've asked them about this both separately, years apart. They didn't know what they saw, but they said that this creature had the face of a human. Body of a dog, face of a human. Maybe it was a bulldog or a pit bull? Something with a human-like face? No. Face of a human. Too sentient looking. They're screaming and freaking out because they can hardly process what they are looking at. They actually went back a second time because they were in shock about the whole thing. The same thing happens, creatures walk out of the garage and calmly stare at them. They turn the car around and sped away. I personally do not believe in the paranormal, but some of the experiences I had at my dad's house as a teenager sometimes make me think otherwise. I rarely visited my dad's, but whenever I did make that hour-long trip into the nothingness of Wisconsin, I was always uneasy about what I might see or hear that night. The house had some very unique features that always struck me as strange, the most notable being a small crawl space in my bedroom that connected to my sister's bedroom adjacent to mine. Both sides of this crawl space were fitted with a small door. We never really knew what the purpose of the tunnel was, as it was far too small to use for storage and even too cramped for a grown adult to comfortably navigate. Anyway, this particular night when I went to bed, I heard some very strange noises, almost like a faint whimper or crying. I didn't think much of this because it wasn't uncommon for coyotes to come by the house at night looking to prey on our poor barn cats. The night went on, and the noises came and went. Struggling to sleep, I went downstairs to grab a glass of water from the kitchen. When I came back into my room, I noticed that the door to the crawl space was now ajar and the whimpering had stopped. More than a little startled at this point, I quickly got back into bed and tried my best to fall asleep. Eventually, I was able to fall back asleep but was later awakened when I felt a sinking feeling at the foot of my bed. I assumed that I must have left my bedroom door cracked and that one of the house cats had climbed on my bed. I closed my eyes and tried to fall back asleep, but was forced awake by the sound of a slamming door. I opened my eyes and noticed that the door to the crawl space had been slammed shut. Then I quickly glanced at the foot of my bed and saw the outline of a large figure staring at me from the end of my bed. The figure was all black with bright, white eyes. I got out of bed as fast as I could and ran downstairs. I spent the rest of the night awake on the couch. I still don't know what I saw or if it was even real. I was ready to chalk it up to sleep paralysis, but my sister told me the next morning that she was also woken up by the sound of the crawl space door slamming. That was one of the last times I spent the night there. And if that wasn't bad enough, five years later, my dad and stepmom decided to add an extension to the house, and when they were digging the foundation for the extension, they uncovered gravestones from the 1800s. No, thank you. Twenty-some years ago, I was living near the Canadian border alone in a rented log cabin. It used to be part of a fishing resort and had been renovated since it was built in the early part of the century. The cabin was approximately half a mile from the nearest neighbor and 15 miles from the nearest town, so I had gotten used to isolation fairly early on. At the time, I was working PM shifts at a resort 25 miles away and wouldn't typically get home until well after midnight. On this particular night, I had gotten home, put on pajamas, and gone into the kitchen area to wash dishes. I was standing in front of the sink, looking out the window onto the woods, when, directly behind me, just above the height of my head, there was the sound of a man's whistling. Just two notes, and then nothing. I positively froze. I looked into the reflection of the window in front of me and saw nothing. Very quietly, I wrapped my hand around a totally inadequate knife that was in the sudsy water and turned around. There was nothing there except for my two cats sitting by the wall, looking directly into the air behind me, where the whistling had come from. This kicked off many extremely odd experiences in that cabin that continued until I moved out some six months later, but that one was by far the most shocking just because it was completely unexpected. When I was about 12 to 13, my best friend and I rode our bikes and discovered this small hidden graveyard. It was backed by some railroad tracks and under big buzzing power lines far from any houses. There was barbed wire around the graveyard, and the tombstones were mainly faded, but we could see some of the dates from the late 1800s. We stopped and took pictures for fun, 
but we didn't think much of it. Well, for about two years after that, I'd wake up every night between 3 and 3.30 a.m. because I'd hear papers rustling in my room. Then, I'd hear what sounded like footsteps coming up the stairs and stopping once they reached the foot of my bed. I peeked a few times and didn't see anything. I started sleeping with the TV on to block it out. Eventually, I woke up one night because I heard what sounded like dozens of people whispering loudly in my ear and screaming for my mom. I told my parents about it, and my religious mom threw holy water around the house. Then my dad bought flowers and told us to bring them to the graveyard. It stopped after that. My grandmother lives in an old Victorian house that has many flights of loud, creaky stairs. On multiple occasions, I swear to God, I have seen a young boy running up and down these stairs. The creepiest experience with this was when I was house-sitting for her. One night, at about 3 a.m., I woke up and went downstairs to the kitchen to get a glass of water. I never bothered to switch on any of the lights in the hallway and walked straight into the kitchen, where I did switch a light on. I poured myself a glass of water when, all of a sudden, I got a really horrible feeling of terror. I then began to hear the stairs start creaking, almost like someone was walking down them. This terrified me, as I knew there was no one else in the house. So after a few minutes of freaking out, I mustered up the courage and walked out of the kitchen. As I looked at the stairs, I saw a smiling child's face staring directly at me. I froze in fear, and after a few seconds, it had completely disappeared. After seeing this, I turned all of the lights on in the house, watched TV, and never went to sleep that night. Another strange thing that happened was when I and one of my cousins were staying at the house with my grandmother when we were in our teens. My grandmother was out shopping when, really out of the blue, my cousin decided to go for a walk, this was strange as she never really wanted to go on walks. I brushed this off and continued to do whatever I was doing when, again, just like I previously discussed, I got a sudden feeling of dread and terror. This time the feeling was much stronger, it was so strong and disturbing that I had an extreme urge to get out of the house. I felt as if I was being forced out of the house. I caught up to my cousin and explained what happened, and she said she had the exact same feeling as me. We were both terrified and nearly in tears, we didn't go back to the house for a couple of hours. This happened when I was about 12 years old. I was living with my mom in the house of her then boyfriend. One night, I'm sleeping, but I wake up, no idea what time it was, and I see something beside my bed, it's kind of crouching and looks like a person, and I realize that it looks like my mom, and it's dressed in the clothes she would wear when she was going to bed, so a tank top and shorts. I guess the thing realized I was awake? And looked towards me. I didn't understand what was going on, so I pulled the covers over my head. After about a minute, I peek out, and that thing is still crouching beside my bed, but this time it's holding the lamp from my bedside table, and it looks like it's offering it to me. Like you know when someone is holding something out to you and kind of motions it towards you to take it, I guess? My 12-year-old ass is like, duck this, this is not my mom, and I start screaming. I see the thing's head whip towards the bedroom door, and I think I closed my eyes for a second. I hear a thud, and then the ceiling light gets turned on, and mom's boyfriend is in the middle of my room, looking panicked, shortly followed by mom, who is looking very tired and confused. I definitely saw him enter first and her follow. The lamp was on the floor, and the crouching thing looked like my mom was gone. I still don't know to this day what that was, and it's been over 10 years. When I was in elementary school, I shared a queen-size bed with my older sister, and our family dog, a mutt that looked like a short-haired lassie, would sleep at the foot of our bed every night. When I was about six years old, I woke up one night around midnight and saw a dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. The figure was entirely black, without any eyes or a face. I tried to wake my sister up, but she rolled over to go back to sleep. My sister must have accidentally kicked the dog, because the dog woke up, raised her head, and started growling at the figure at the foot of the bed. The growling then woke my sister up, and she saw the figure and started screaming. When my parents came into the room and turned the light on, nothing was there. To this day, both my sister and I are adamant that we saw a ghost or other demon in our room. We know we aren't crazy because the dog saw it too. This was a two-night story at our house when I was in high school. During the first night, I was on the phone with my girlfriend at the time. This was in high school, so talking or texting on your cell phone to stay up late was cool and fun. My bedroom was my parents' old one, so it had a large set of French doors with glass panes so that you could see right through. I would close them at night. Normally, my mom would yell upstairs if she heard me on the phone. This night, I heard a loud thud slash scraping noise of the wood rubbing as the door opened slightly. I saw a silhouette of what looked like my mom. I asked my mom what was going on and told her that I was getting off my phone. But I had no answer, 
and she wouldn't move at all, she just stood there. I walked up to the door, and as I walked up, it felt like my memory was erased. No one was standing at the door, and when I went into the hallway, it was completely black, and no one was awake in the house. The second night, I was in bed yet again. This time, I was just trying to get some sleep. My head felt chaotic, almost as if some stringy electrical current was going through it. I tossed and turned, and I just got more and more frustrated. Finally, I flipped onto my back during another attempt to get comfortable. It was at this moment that I felt a pair of hands plant on my chest and push me hard down into my bed. On the rebound, I jolted up and went for the stairs in an attempt to get comfort from my mother, who I could hear watching TV as I approached the stairway. The whole ordeal continued because, as I walked down the stairs, I felt like I was going in slow motion, dragging my hand on the wall the entire way down. On top of that, I felt nothing but anger and the urge to hurt someone. I have a temper, but I'm not an aggressive type of person who would have serious thoughts of actually hurting someone. Finally, the craziness ended when I saw my mom in the living room. I felt like the anger and tenseness were ripped away from my body, and I sobbed while my mom comforted me. My wife, my infant daughter, and I lived in an apartment that used to be a million other things. At one point, it was a kid's funeral parlor, at another, a bar, and at another, a brothel. It was a million years old, but it was in a nice area, spacious, and the rent was cheap. I was sitting on the couch in the living room watching TV when my daughter went racing past me into the kitchen. She was a toddler, she was learning to run, and while that would have normally been fine, in order to get into the kitchen, you had to thread the needle between the edge of the couch and a computer desk with sharp, head-level corners, just perfect for guaranteeing your kid never got into a good college. I'm tired, it's late, and little Zippy goes be lining for the kitchen. I snag her, tell her no, and turn her back to her mother, who is folding laundry on the other side of the room. Back to watching TV, and boom, the kid makes a dash for the gap in a lifetime of Olympics that end in hugs. I snag her, tell her more firmly, no, and send her back to her mother. Five minutes later, I'm drifting off when a head full of blonde hair makes it past the gap and into the kitchen. I lost it. I'm tired, I'm stressed, it had been a long day, and this kid was hellbent on making sure she could only count to purple. Dad voicing it in a roar from the couch, I stomp into the kitchen just in time to see the kitchen counter covered under the sink close. Before I could take another step, I heard my wife behind me, and turning, I saw her pale face with my daughter in her arms. Who the duck was that? Hand to God, we never ducking checked. There's a road in my county, Ohio, known as Crybaby Lane. According to one of the haunted Ohio books, a young mother who was a university student hung her baby from the tree. I've been down it many times before and after the experience and never heard anything, seen anything, or had an eerie feeling. What happened took place after leaving the road. One of my brothers and I went down the road about six years ago to see if we could hear or see anything. We're both familiar with the area, as I've spent most of my life in this county. We went down the road as normal, nothing happened until we were getting ready to go home. We turned onto another road, which should have taken us back to Route 6 so we could head home. No matter what way we turned, we couldn't seem to find the road we needed. Now my brother wasn't one to mess around and play tricks or act like we were lost, so I know this was something odd. After 10 minutes of not being able to find Route 6, we finally reached the intersection of Route 6 and the current road we were on. We didn't really freak out because not too much scares us, we were just a bit concerned when we couldn't seemingly find Route 6. Before turning onto 6, we just kind of looked at each other and shrugged it off. I don't know what to call that experience, I never had it happen before or after that night. No time was missing or anything like that. Through my younger years, est. 7 to 12, my mother dated a guy very on and off, which I think mostly had to do with him being in the army and staying with his family in Laredo, Texas, whenever he was home. Either way, he invited us to visit his cousin's summer cabin in Monterey, Mexico, for a weekend, so we did. On our way to the cabin, my mom's boyfriend was telling us about a cursed legend of the witches of Monterey. Apparently they had been haunting the mountainous area for generations and were his childhood version of La Llorona. Clearly, he was trying to scare us from the get-go, and me being so young, I was eating this SHT up like candy. We got to the cabin in the late evening, so we decided to stay in for the night and watch M. Night Shyamalan's The Lady in the Water. After the movie, my mom's boyfriend asked me to go get something from the bedroom for him, and as I was halfway down the hallway, he turned the lights off on me. Let me remind you that this was a very rural part of Mexico, so the dark was dark, so with all the scary stories and the, at the time for me, scary movie, I was spooked and froze. 
My mom's boyfriend began to make your stereotypical ghost noises and taunted me to go deeper into the dark hallway, but I was so petrified that I remember just standing there frozen in fear. Longer story short, my mother got onto him, and he turned the lights back on. They comforted me, and after a few apologies, we all went to bed. I can't remember how I slept that night, but I honestly wish I had. The next day, we did basic tourist shit I went to a bazaar, embraced the city's beautiful mountain range, which seemed to hug the city, ate authentic Mexican food, and visited the main hub of the city. When the day was all done, we decided to call it a day and went back to the cabin. This is important to me because I remember the night before so vividly, yet I can't remember anything else about this night other than what I'm going to write about. I was in the living room of the cabin and remembered that my mom's boyfriend was there with me. He asked if I wanted to go up into the hunting tower out back with him, and I innocently said yes. I remember following him through the back door of the living room, and I remember him walking ahead and turning back to wave me towards him. I take it as he was trying to help me keep up with him and follow him. I watched him climb up the ladder of the hunting tower, and then I heard a voice behind me. Hey! Where are you going? It was my mom's boyfriend behind me asking where I was going. I turned back around to look at the hunting tower along the tree line, and no one was there. Nothing was, not an animal, not my mother, not a spirit, nothing. I live in Hawaii, on an island called Maui. Specifically in the city of Kahului, which is in the middle of the island. Anyway, there is a place called Hana, which doesn't have as many buildings as Kahului. It's much more natural and has plenty of trees. Which makes it an excellent place to camp. My cousin, aunt, and uncle from Minnesota wanted to camp there in cabins that you can rent. The night before we left, I slept next to my dad outside one of the two cabins that we rented. In the middle of the night, I woke up to the sound of footsteps very clear footsteps. They were coming from the other cabin, so I looked over there, and there was what looked like a tall Hawaiian man stepping into the cabin. It looked like he was holding a weapon called Le O Mano, a wreath of shark teeth. I got up and rushed to the house. I was terrified, but I didn't want my aunts to get hurt. I ran up the stairs and walked into the house. Surprisingly, everyone was still sleeping, and there was no man in the house. So I walked out back to my cot, and the footsteps started again except it sounded like there were 10 or more people walking in the cabin and on the grass. I knew it was night marchers. Everything added up. I knew they wouldn't pay attention to me if I didn't stand in their way. I tried not to think of it that much, and I fell asleep in the next 30 minutes. When I woke up, I didn't say anything about it. My dad would have thought I was going crazy. But what creeped me out the most was that my uncle, who is Hawaiian, heard the same sound and described it the same way I heard it. I was currently employed as a canvasser, UGH, for ADT. This was three years ago. I was 19. Living in the Bay Area, we had a lot of different places we could work. My team decided, we had a car full of people, to take a mini vacation, driving out to Half Moon Bay, knocking on some doors, and going to the beach. It was an awesome trip, especially since I grew up there. This takes place on Highway 92 in California, on our way back to the bridge. We were driving down the windy ass road, downhill, through the dense coastal pine forest. We had left after a late dinner. It was October or November, so it had gotten dark early. I want to say this happened around 10 p.m. This is a desolate stretch of road, so it was dark. We were all laughing, joking, listening to music, and having an overall good time. I was in the right passenger seat, looking out towards the trees as we drove by. We neared this turn, and as the suburban whipped around the corner, we all fell silent. It was suddenly very cold and very tense. On the right side of the road, we saw this figure just standing there. By its size and thin shape, I would say now that it was a woman. She was mummy wrapped. I believe, in a light colored wool blanket or something, almost like a shawl from the top of her head down to her feet, loose and agony looking. I remember that her right eye was visible, bright blue, and way too wide, like she was scared. We locked eyes as we passed, and then she was gone. I looked behind me to see if she was there, but she was already out of view from the sharp turn. It was probably the most frightening experience of my life. We all saw her. After a few moments, the driver just muttered, what the duck was that? And we were all lost for words. Remembering our reaction to it, we don't believe it was actually a person standing there. On a dark road like this, you would do more to catch the attention of someone driving by if you were stranded. It was scary. We all confirmed what we had seen, and then never really spoke of it again. The rest of the way home was pretty uneasy. This happened when I was around 5 or 6-ish. I lived in this isolated house, so there was pretty much no one around for miles. We had a car garage, and me, my sister, and my cousin were playing at night around 10pm. 
At one point, me and my sister were trying to hop on my cousin's back since he was the tallest, and we all ended up facing the garage wall. At this point, I felt like someone was watching me, so I turned. I kid you not, there was this transparent looking man standing in front of our house, just staring at me. I froze and stared back to see if what I was seeing was real. We I locked for at least 4 seconds, which felt like eternity. My plan was to keep an eye on him until the others also turned and confirmed what I was seeing was real. But at this point, I couldn't hear my sister laughing or my cousin, it was super quiet. I kept on calling my cousin's name, but I didn't hear back. At this point, I thought they were dead. I freaked out, lost my eye contact with the ghost, turned, and screamed my cousin's name again. All of a sudden, I could hear them laughing. I quickly turned back, and he was gone. I cried, telling my cousin to go back to the house because it wasn't safe outside. All he did was giggle. I told my mom about this years later, and she said we had two different maids that lived in the guest house who started screaming in the middle of the night because they saw this ghost looking man. I, still to this day, I'm afraid of ghosts. And thank God, I left that house. So I grew up in Northern Virginia, and we had plenty of battlefields and such to visit for school field trips. In fifth grade, my class went to the Bell Grove Plantation, which was at Cedar Creek Battlefield. Cool house still has damage to her columns from gunfire from the battle. Anywho, my class was in the kitchen of the plantation, listening to the tour lady talk about whatever it is you'd tell a bunch of 10-year-olds about plantation life. There are these big double doors on each side of the room, and they are open. And then we hear humming coming from outside. The teacher's aide, whom I'll call Bulldog because she looked like one, told us that whoever was humming should knock it off. But that's the thing, it wasn't any of us, and it was coming from outside. Bulldog goes out one side of the kitchen, comes back in, and goes out the side that leads to the garden. She comes back in and says to the tour lady that no one at all is out there, but she could hear the humming right there in the garden. It doesn't sound like much, right? Well, fast forward a few years, and I'm reading a Ghosts of Virginia book. There's a story about Belgrove in it. Apparently, the lady of the house was found in the smokehouse one day, badly beaten, half in the embers, with clear fist imprints on her face. She died just a few days later. A slave girl was accused of the beating and murder and was hanged for it. And the lady of the house liked to walk in the garden and was always humming. And various people over the years were witnesses, I guess you could say, to the ethereal humming that would take place in the garden. That just thoroughly freaked me out when I realized I got to witness it too. I was helping my younger brother move into an apartment with his buddies and had to bring my two very young daughters with me. My youngest at the time was about two and a half or three and fearless. She went to different rooms with my brother, exploring and having a jolly old time. Until she got to the kitchen. Upon entering, my daughter froze, her eyes were huge and fearful, and within 10 seconds she was screaming bloody murder and running for me as fast as she could, mumbling about D.A.D., the lady, in the kitchen. Brother and I tried laughing it off, redirecting her, and taking her mind off it, but my normally calm kid was hysterical, and we had to leave. She told me in bed that night that the lady had red eyes and was scary. If you knew my daughter, you'd understand how unlike her all this was. She was 100% convinced that she saw a lady just standing in the kitchen, and still to this day, seven years later, she swears she did. I don't believe in ghosts or what have you, but her reaction made us question that. My guest house is incredibly haunted. It was built in 1902, and several family members have died in the house over the years. Everyone in my family has seen or experienced something paranormal there, but I didn't really believe it until I saw one of the spirits myself. I was around 8 years old, and I had gotten up early to get ready for school. We had run out of waffles, so I went to the back house to grab some more. There are four large windows in the front that let you see directly into the house if you're standing in the right spot. As I was about to walk in, I saw a woman in the kitchen. She was middle-aged, had brown hair, and was leaning over the kitchen counter with her head in her hand. I froze and watched her. She looked upset or distressed. She stood there for another 15 seconds or so until she noticed me. She moved her head to look at me and then stood up straight. She started walking towards the window and me. I completely freaked out and ran back to my parents, screaming. I refused to go in there for another 6 months. The weirdest part was how completely normal she looked. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and when I was 16, my cousin and I constantly went out to different haunted places around us just to see if anything would happen. Most of the time, we were scared because it was late at night and our minds were playing tricks, but this night was different. We decided to explore the legend of 13 Bends. For a little background, it's located in a small town southeast of Pittsburgh with only one road in and out. 
13 bends come from miscounting each bend it takes to get in and out. Some people count 13 down and 12 up, others have even counted 6 down and 7 up. That's not the scary part. In that small town, an orphanage burned down, and it's an active area during certain times where the kids will make their presence known. We did some digging before we left, some people said to park where the orphanage was with a dirty car or put flour on your car and hand prints would appear, others said to just go to the cemetery on a long, bendy road, others even reported being chased out by a car and it disappearing before the last bend, if you counted correctly. We experienced all of the above. One summer night, we decided to call a group of friends to go to 13 bends. We didn't bother counting the bends, we just wanted to get down to where the orphanage used to be. We sat there for quite a bit, just talking and periodically switching through static stations to see if we could hear anything in the feedback, but we couldn't. After about a half hour of sitting, my cousin heard faint giggling that none of us heard, only him. He then decided to get out of the car, which was pretty dirty from the way down, and there were three handprints. We all jumped out of the car and couldn't believe it. I was pretty shaken up because of every place we've been to, it's never been, Ike, real? We didn't feel like sitting in the car anymore, so we walked on the train tracks that lead throughout the town. When we walked back, the car had even more handprints on it. I would say around 10 to 12 all around the car. We felt like we had hit the jackpot. We weren't necessarily running to get back home, we loved going out and experiencing this, so we immediately headed up to the cemetery. One of our friends was there previously and said she didn't experience anything when she was hurt, but her friends would call into the woods and ask the kids to play, and all they heard were branches breaking. Scary, but not scary, that can be justified. So my cousin, being my cousin, he's a smart A, decided to call the kids for a game of tag. At this point, we weren't at the gravestones, we were just on the path down to them. It was pretty dark, so we stayed within sight of the car. He kept egging them on, saying, come on, let's play tag. I know you want to. You're it. Tag me. Here, I'll turn around and tag my back. And instantly, after he said, tag my back, he lunged forward. We thought he was joking, but he swore up and down that he felt a hand on his back. He lifted up his shirt, and there was a small handprint. Our friends at this point wanted to leave, another friend said that I smacked his back at some point when they weren't looking and were playing a joke, but I was internally just as scared as they were. I couldn't believe it. He wanted to show them that he wasn't joking, so he lifted up his shirt sleeve to show no handprint and started calling out again. I tagged you. You're it. Nothing happened. Minutes went by, and he's still calling out, come on. We're still playing, aren't we? And then he covered his arm. Another handprint. And then we heard giggling. All of us. We immediately ran to the car and left. At this point, keep in mind that we're all pretty shaken up and previously didn't count the bends down, so we couldn't count the bends going back up, it's not like you can get stuck down there, it's only one road and then a road to turn out of the town, and then we saw headlights. My cousin was driving pretty fast just to get back into a common, well-lit area. The headlights came from out of nowhere, it's a one-way road, and we were driving fast. The headlights kept getting closer and closer the further we got out of town, and then like that, they were gone, and we turned off the road. Needless to say, we didn't really go seeking active areas anymore after that. We got what we were seeking, and it was not worth the feelings that we felt. I am now 23 and I haven't experienced anything like that night, and it will always give me chills every time I think or talk about it. When I was a kid, my parents and I lived in a small mobile home on a plot that was across the street from the local cemetery. One night, my parents were outside having a few drinks, and I was inside watching the TV. I must have been around 5 or 6 years old. Suddenly, my parents heard me crying in pain and ran into the house to see what was happening. They saw me jumping over, crying, and screaming. My mom ran to me and started asking what was wrong. She then lifted my shirt to see if something was biting me. There was nothing, but my skin was being pulled in pinches as if it were rubber. My parents were panicked and ran to get the phone to call for help. The moment my dad reached for the phone, the pinching stopped, and the front door slammed open as if something had just run out. My dad then ran outside to see if he could see anything, but nothing was there. Suddenly, he started hearing a sort of growth coming from under the mobile home. When he looked, all he could see were some red-blooded eyes staring at him and growing. My dad, in a complete panic, pulled out his gun and started shooting at whatever it was. This caught the attention of a police officer, who pulled up in front of the house and pulled his gun out at my dad. My dad quickly dropped his gun and told the officer hey man, I'm sorry, but something just attacked my son, and it's under the trailer. Before the officer could even look, a creature jumped out from under the mobile home, jumped the fence, and started running. 
the police officer jumped back into his car and started chasing. At this point, my parents were completely frightened. Since they had no car at the time, they called a friend of my dad and asked them for a ride to my grandparents' house. Once the friend got there, my dad loaded us into the car and was getting ready to leave when the police officer returned. The police officer told my parents, I followed that thing for about half a mile, and it just vanished. I don't know what that was, but I suggest you leave the area for the time being in case it returns. My mom said she had never heard a police officer sound so terrified in her life. As we were driving down the road, my dad's friends looked in the rearview mirror and asked my parents, Hey, do you guys see that thing running after us? What the duck is that thing? At that point, the truck jumped as if something had just landed on the cargo bed. My mom started yelling in pain as the back of her hand was being pinched and pulled, just as my skin had been earlier. This continued until my parents reached my grandparents' property. Now, my grandparents have always been super religious. They're one of the founding members of their church and used to host Sunday Mass at their home before the church had enough save to buy a building. The moment my mom walked into the front gate, the pinching and pulling stopped. My parents ran into my grandparents' home screaming and crying. My grandparents automatically assumed that my parents were either drunk or on some kind of drug, but once they saw the look in all our eyes, they decided to call the pastor immediately. As soon as the pastor arrived, her first words were I don't know what is going on, and I don't want to panic you, but I feel something extremely hostile right outside of this home. They immediately started praying. My mom says she opened her eyes during the first prayer, looked outside the window, and could see red bloodshot eyes staring into the house. That night, my mom also claims that during the middle of the night, she awoke and heard three knocks on the window. She said she could see, outside the window, a tall creature walking back and forth right outside the gate. She said how she thought it was odd. It was almost as if the creature couldn't enter the property. After that night, things apparently calmed down, and nothing really weird happened in that trailer again. Although my parents did move out a few months later, even the renters and people who now live there claim nothing has happened to them. But something is definitely there, and it remembers us. My parents drove past one night and saw three dogs jump from out of the cemetery and perch themselves like birds on the fence while watching the car drive by. I had my first ever car accident on the same street in front of the cemetery too. I suddenly lost control of my car and crashed into a gas pipe. My grandmother has since passed and was buried in that cemetery, and since then, nothing has happened. I like to think she's putting those creatures in their place. Acting as my guardian angel. I'm usually a lone man adventurer, especially when it comes to hiking, because my friends are pretty inactive people, so whenever I take them hiking, they usually slow me down. So one Saturday afternoon, I decided to go hiking, even though it was already about 2pm I've hiked the same trail plenty of times, but only in the early morning. So knowing the length of this trail, I knew that by the time I finished, it would be close to sunset. The trail was about a 9 mile round trip with a steady incline coming back up. From the trail head to about halfway. The trail runs through a thickly covered forest, and the remainder of the trail runs along an exposed mountain. Even at the peak of the sun, light barely penetrated the thick treetops of the forest. So when I started the trail, I passed a few hikers who were coming back, but realizing that I was maybe one of the few people who were still on the trail, I sped up to make sure that I finished before sunset. Everything went fine while hiking, as I powered through the trail fairly fast, getting to the end, taking a quick 5 minute break, and turning around. By the time I was halfway, it was about 4 p.m. the whole way back, I was alone on the trial coming back since I'd passed a few people who had already made the turn around. The sun was already starting to hide behind some of the mountains, and the forest was already really dark. So I powered my way up the incline through the forest. The whole way, there was not a living soul on the trail beside me. I was already kind of creeped out being by myself on this trail, so I just listened to music and tried not to pay attention to anything else but the trail. As I was walking, I saw a black mass, about the size of maybe a rabbit or skunk, run across the trail. It definitely wasn't an animal because it was too fast and there was no defined color, shape, or anything. It was just a mass. It freaked me out a little bit, so I started to jog the trail. The whole time, I could see the light dwindling, and it was getting darker by the second. As I was jogging, I just had that feeling that something or someone was following me. I knew no one was behind me because the whole trip back, it was just me on the trail. I pulled out my pocket knife that I always carried with me in case I had to shank something or someone. About halfway through the forest, I grew tired from jogging, so I decided to just walk but keep a fast pace. As I slowed down, I had the urge to look back, and I did take a look over my shoulder a few times. I kept a fast walking pace for about a good half a mile or so, 
and I was close to the trailhead when I decided to look over my shoulder again. When I did, I saw a human-like black mass trailing behind me, about 30 or so feet behind. This mass had a definitive head and upper body shape, but anything below the waist was just a black mass. As soon as I noticed this mass, just in a blink of an eye, it darted straight into the trees. Of course, scaring the hell out of me, I darted for the trailhead. Thankfully, I was closer than I expected, and never was I so happy to see sunlight in my car. I was running so fast to my car that I didn't even realize that there were still people in the parking area of the trailhead who were getting ready to leave as well until I was sitting in my car shaking and trying to get myself together before I drove off. I haven't gone hiking since that day. It's been two months. I did a little research on the trail, and the trail was used in the late 1800s to travel between gold mining towns. It was forgotten for almost 100 years until it was retraced in the 1980s for recreation use as a swimming hole. I used to live in a one-bedroom apartment a number of years ago. One night, I came home roughly at 2.30 in the morning and was exhausted, so I decided to go straight to bed. As I lay in bed trying to get comfortable enough to fall asleep, I heard a rather loud noise coming from the living room, kind of like what would happen if someone jumped off the couch and landed on the floor. I lived in an apartment building on the top floor, so I knew it wasn't coming from below me. On edge now, I continued to lay there, listening for any further noise. Suddenly, Whatever created the sound in the living room made a thundering dash towards my room. It didn't sound like a person running, it was more like something four-legged. It was inhumanly fast, and the noise was deafeningly loud until whatever it was stopped on a dime, which I assume was about a foot away from my face. I refused to open my eyes just on the off chance that something was there. The sound ceased, but there was an incredible feeling of dread and darkness that radiated throughout my room for approximately five minutes, but then it simply disappeared instantly and the aura of the room returned to normal. It never happened again the entire time that I lived in that apartment, but it was certainly a wild sequence. One time, when I was like six, I was living with my parents and my grandma in a trailer park in Florida. So the bathroom was right across the hall from my parents' room. And the hallway was kind of narrow on account of it being a trailer. So, one day, when no one was home, I had to go to the bathroom. Normally, I closed the door out of common courtesy, but since no one was home, I left it wide open. My parents' bed was facing, so the foot was in the center of the room, with the head at the opposite end of the room as I was in the bathroom, if that makes sense. So I'm chilling on the toilet, looking at a shampoo bottle or something, when all of a sudden a black dress outlining a female body with no figure in the dress rises up behind my parents' bed, hovers there for a second, and proceeds to float behind my parents' door. A few seconds of that were horrifying, because it looked like the black dress was flying right at me. I was so shaken that I immediately finished my business in the bathroom and checked behind the door, literally ready to beat the shit out of a ducking demon. But I check behind the door and find nothing. It was the weirdest, trippiest shit I've ever seen, and I still question to this day whether or not it was real or just the work of an overly active imagination. But I'm not falsely remembering things, because I was legitimately horrified by the dress and was about to beat some asses. All I can say is that now I always keep the door closed when going to the bathroom. This story happened many years ago, around the months of July and June. My family and I often vacationed up in a cabin at Yungaburra, Cairns, Australia, during the winter. We do this because we miss the cold days we would get from our hometown of Toowoomba during the winter. Cairns is tropical, so it's summer 24-7. Yungaburra is a very, very small town that resides on top of a hill. It's one of those towns that if you blink, you miss it, but it's quaint and friendly. It's historical, with about 150 years of heritage. As usually with rich heritage and small towns, local folk legends form over the years. One of these legends came true. We rented this cabin that was on the brink of bushland and was next door to an old farmhouse that is quite a bit of land, including some of the bushland the cabin backed onto. To get to the cabin, you had to walk up a somewhat steep dirt road that also leads to the aforementioned farmhouse. The dirt road also had a medium-sized pond that ran along it. This dirt road came off one of the main streets of Yungaburra. Anyway, on our last night staying there, I went to the pub to see one of my good friends who lives in Yungaburra. I had to drive early the next morning, so I didn't have a drop of alcohol. He, on the other hand, did not have to drive anywhere the next morning, so he pretty much drained the pub. It got to about 11.30pm, and I decided I'd better get back to the cabin to go to sleep. The cabin was only a 15-minute walk away. So after saying my goodbyes, I started to walk back. As I was walking, I realized that not driving was a dumb idea. As it was about 5C-41F, I had a very thin jumper, and that was all. As I continued to walk on, it grew colder, and I started to shiver big time. 
I finally reached the entrance to my driveway. God, did it look ominous? There were no street lights leading along the dirt road, so it was pitch black. I decided to get out my phone and turn the flashlight on. It was at this point that I knew something was up. After I had my flashlight on, fog started to roll in. At first it was only light fog, but it continued and developed into heavy fog, then it surpassed heavy fog. Thereupon, I could barely see my shoes below me. All I could see was white in front of me. I said to myself, here we duck and go, something's about to happen, get it over and done with. On recollection, I believe I actually said that out loud. My flashlight was now rendered superfluous. I decided to stop walking as I knew there was a steep ditch with a pond at the bottom, the last thing I wanted was to fall in it. As I stood there, only getting colder and even more terrified, I saw a lantern in the distance, a small amber light coming down the driveway. Then I heard, son? Is that you? Come here out of the fog. Follow the lamp, it was my mom. I couldn't yet see her, so instead I followed her light. I continued to follow it for about three minutes, safely walking up the dirt driveway. I saw the light climb up steps, and I heard a door open. So I knew I was near the cabin. Then the light went out. I continued to walk in the direction I saw it last. I was calling out to my mom to turn it back on, but there was no reply. Until I finally ran into a wooden guard rail and some steps. I walked up the steps, and instantly my knees felt weak. They had turned to jelly. I was on the doorstep of the old, abandoned farmhouse. The door was there, swaying open in the gentle wind, making a sinister creaking noise along with it. There are three things you do in this type of situation, the three F's. Flight fight freeze. I was frozen to the core. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't turn around and find my way back, I was definitely not stepping foot inside that house. I was stuck. I then heard a voice coming from inside the house, my son, welcome home. Nasty weather, hmm? The voice no longer sounded like my mom's, it had a prominent British accent. It was then that I realized I would rather be out in the fog than standing on the doorstep of this house. I quickly walked down the stairs. I heard the voice now yelling, my son, where are you going? I started to sprint, but as I was running, I smashed my foot and leg against some sort of stone and fell flat onto the ground. I took a chunk out of my knee and cut all along my hands, I still have the scars. I turned around and realized I had not tripped over a stone. I had tripped over a tombstone. At this point, I screamed, got up, and started to run even more. I was screaming out for my parents and started to slow down to a jog. I stopped, I thought I was far enough from the house. Until little amber lights, at least six of them, started to surround me. They started to come closer. I found a gap between them and ran for it. Yet again, I felt like I was sprinting for my life. It was like I was in a race, but the metal at the end was my life. Before I knew it, slam, I ran straight into a wall, with my head being the contact point. I blacked out, and from what I can remember, I was woken up by my dad, who heard something smack into the cabin. Apparently, when he went out to get me, he saw one little amber light flickering near the farmhouse through all the fog. That was the end of my night. And any vacation near that cabin. We decided not to leave early the next morning to give me time to rest. This also gave me time to call up my friend so he could come over and perhaps give me some insight into what I saw and what my dad saw. Me and him sat out on the patio. I could see the farmhouse, only about 500 meters away, it looked old and desolate. This is the folk legend, according to him, apparently, back when the small town was first being founded, that farmhouse was one of the first built, late 19th century. During the 1910s, a well-known mother, Anne, whose apparent name was, let her son play with some of his mates down on the main stretch of town one day. It started to get late, and as it got later, and grew more worried. Then heavy fog started to roll in. She decided to get her kerosene lamp and go looking for him. As she walked down, she could hear his footsteps. She told him to follow the lamp. When she made her way back to the house, she was not accompanied by her son. It was not until the next morning that they found him dead at the bottom of the pond. He hit his head hard, and he died instantly. The grave is apparently hers. The mother apparently searches for her son on winter nights and lures males from the pub in late, cold darkness, mistaking them for her own lost son. I was born on Long Island, New York, and since I can remember, I have experienced strange occurrences. I was never able to sleep at night, and from a young age, I was always terrified of the dark. Yes, every child is afraid of the dark, but I was afraid for reasons that I was unable to explain until later in life. There are a few stories while here, but I want to fast forward to when I was a bit older and things began to make sense to me. My family purchased a second home, and we moved to Colorado. We lived on a ranch, 
located at the top of a hill that fed into the Rocky Mountains. There wasn't much around us, a few neighbors, our barn with our animals, and thousands of acres of hilly and mountainous terrain that surrounded our family. There was a long dirt road that led to our property, Rattlesnake Road. It was a perfect shot of the scenery leading up to our small, three-bedroom home. It was quiet and peaceful, but the land was old. I was about seven years old at the time. This is when I began to understand that what I was going through wasn't normal. Our home was small. It was a ranch-style house with a three-car garage, which took up half of the structure. The other half was built into the hillside, where you entered from the front. You walked into the living room and could see straight out of the back sliding door into the plains. In front of you was the kitchen, old with bricks. Straight down the hallway, my room was on the right, my brother's room followed that, and lastly, my parents' room was on the left. The bathrooms connected and were on the right as well, wrapping around to the back of the house. I left the hallway lights on when I slept. I was scared to begin with, but something always felt as though it wasn't just our family there. One night, I was up and could not fall back asleep. My parents and brother were sleeping as well, and I could hear them snoring down the hall. My bedroom door was open, and I was facing the hallway when suddenly, the pull string to my closet made a click, and the lights popped on. I could see the light making its way through the slatted shades of my closet accordion doors, and my heart began to race. They shut off. The air in the room became cold and tense, almost as if the oxygen was being siphoned out. The silence said it, I couldn't hear the snoring anymore, nothing. I looked towards the hallway, and there was a short, black static mist. It had no facial features, but I could see what would have been a mouth. It seemed as though it was smiling, ear to ear, which paralyzed me with an intense feeling of dread. It passed my doorway out of sight, not making a sound. Moments later, I heard what sounded like the door to our garage open and close, and the air lifted as my surroundings returned to normal. I knew I was awake. I knew what I had seen was there. And it visited me, only to get worse as time went on.